This is how to set up and use your NutriSense system. I specifically bought one month of NutriSense purely for the purpose of looking at my glucose levels because I've been on a strict keto diet, I had recent open heart surgery, and I am having some heart rhythm issues that could be caused by electrolyte imbalance, which can be caused by keto sometimes. So what I'm going to do is add one cheat meal every three to four days, and I want to use this system to monitor my diet and monitor my glucose to see if my insulin spikes are minimal except for my cheat days, and then I should see a spike and then level back off. So I just wanna make sure I'm doing everything right from a diet standpoint to try to make sure I'm being as healthy as I can and get my heart back to where it needs to be. In opening the package, we have two little patches and we have two boxes here. I don't think it matters which one you grab first, quantity two, quantity two. So I'm just gonna pick one. There is a quick start guide, which is helpful. So let's open this. Here's everything that came in that box. The first thing on the quick start guide is to download the app. And as you can see, I've already done that. I've got the NutriSense app right here. And it says, welcome, let's log you in. Now, I don't know if I have a password yet or not. It says incorrect, okay. Let's see if I forgot my password. Please tap link to reset password. New password. Okay, I've got my new password now. Save, sure. Okay, password reset. Close this page and reopen the app. I understand. Sure, whatever. I don't use Google Fit, so that seems kind of silly. Apply your CGM, here we go. Okay, we have all those things they show there. Okay, choose the portion of the back of your arm with the most fat. This section should be intact without irritation. All right, so if I feel back here, fat area, yeah, kind of right there, right above the wolf's ear. If you don't have a wolf tattoo, you'll have to figure that out where the fatty area is. And then it says it wants to clean with an alcohol wipe. I'm gonna wipe that area all down, get it clean. So peel the lid off the sensor pack and twist off the cap. of the sensor applicator. Line up the dark marks, sensor pack. Connect the two pieces, use a hard surface and push down until you hear a click. Okay. Now the small needle should be visible in the gray applicator. So then you pull them out. All right, and there's the needle right in the center, of the gray applicator. Don't set the applicator down. Push firmly to apply the sensor. You might feel a tiny pinch or nothing at all and you're all set. In the area where I swabbed it, there's the needle, that's what I'm gonna stick in my arm. Okay, there's the sensor, that actually didn't hurt near as bad as getting blood drawn or anything else. Put your NutriSense bandage on to protect the sensor during use. Don't remove the middle piece of white film, only the four outermost pieces. There we go. Find the split in it. And I'm gonna put that center piece right over the sensor. Firmly push all around. So I kind of messed that up having a wrinkle there. Other than that one spot, looks like it's on pretty even. Okay, we got that done. Your sensor will last for approximately 14 days. You can shower with the sensor, but don't swim with it. So that's pretty concerning to me because I swim every morning. Oh, it does say here, the sensor can be worn underwater for up to 30 minutes at a depth of three feet or less. Okay, so that's good. Now it says here, activate your sensor in the app menu, click settings, settings, sensor, activate new sensor. 
which doesn't show up, and it says dietitian is assigned, okay, that's all fine. It says wait 60 minutes before your first scan. Scan every eight hours to capture all your data. NFC scanning is not supported on your device. Connections, NFC, active. Activate your sensor. Ready to activate. So it says here that I need to put the phone underneath my arm. On an S21 Ultra, it says that the NFC antenna is right in here where it's got its charging pad. So every phone will be a little bit different. Look yours up. Now in theory, and there I felt it vibrate. So it should be activated because I felt a buzz. So it buzzed like it was happy, but this screen hasn't changed yet. It's now been about three hours since I originally attempted to activate that device. And now I just tried to scan it again. And it said scan, but then it actually switched screens this time. It says, great job, it's fully activated. You can begin scanning in an hour. So it appears to be working just way behind the timeline that they tell you it should. So now I'll continue to the app. And I guess I just have to wait another hour and then see if it'll scan. So the main thing to kind of summarize the setup is that when you go through to actually install the sensor, that works pretty good and it shows the helpful little videos. It's when you get to actually activating the sensor that is kind of painful. So if your phone has an NFC on off, you have to figure that out and make sure your NFC is activated and you can tell if you see that little symbol up in the corner. The next thing to know is where on your phone is the NFC antenna. Once you figure all that out and you go through the activate process where you basically hold the phone up to the device until you feel it buzz, the app screen didn't actually change. And that's why it was super confusing. The app also said it would take about an hour to be able to track Versus mine took almost two hours to activate after the first time I got the sensor to buzz and I tried multiple times. Once it said you're activated and ready to track on the app, which was just by going back and checking, then it took another hour or more to actually be able to track. That's where the product usability really fell short is in the activation and being able to track. Once it's working, it's good. It's actually working fine. And I tracked last night right before bed. I didn't record it, but I'll show you how to do that here. Basically to track things, you have two options. You can just take the phone with the app open and hold it up against it until it buzzes and beeps. And then you'll see it said sensor or scan successful. And then it shows more data. It shows at the top today but I can see yesterday by hitting the back button. So there's what I got in yesterday. And then these were my snacks I had, the little red dots. And then here's a couple more dots. So those dots, the red ones represent a meal. So the other way to scan is to hit the plus button and hit scan and then go do that same thing. And then once you get that, you hold it the same way. And then it will say successful scan or something at the bottom. Now, as far as adding other stuff, you can see that I've already added both breakfast and a swim down here. So if I want to add a meal, you go into the type here and you could put add steak, let's say, and then it'll show up as an item and you click steak. And then it'll say one steak. If you go into that item, then it'll say how many steaks. Maybe I want to measure in ounces. And I can say I had a you know 12 ounce steak. And then hit save when you've got that item done. So you can control the units of measure, and then it gives you all your nutritional information on it as well. Maybe I also had broccoli because I was feeling masochistic. So if I hit broccoli, 
hit ingredients, and then broccoli, and it says one floret. Okay, but you can do, you know, by cup, spear, whatever you want. So I'll just say fine for that. And then when you're done, you just click add new meal and it'll show up like it does here. You can see for breakfast, I had three large eggs, one cup of raspberries and two ounce of sausage. And it tells you everything that I had for carbs and protein and all that other stuff, as well as my daily value and everything else, fat, carbs, protein, all that. So it's a pretty handy little nutrition app. It's a little bit of work tracking it, but you can do it. I already track a lot of this stuff in Excel because I'm trying to look for trends with my heart rhythm. So I'm being very particular about all those kind of items, especially carbs because I'm on a keto diet. But like I said earlier, I'm also introducing carbs once every three to four days for a cheat meal. And that's part of my whole purpose of doing this. So I'll dual track for the first 14 days with this device. And then I'll decide if I want to do the second 14 days or not. Exercise wise, you also just go in plus and say, I want activity. So here you would say, what did you do? Let's say I walked. Okay. And here I walked from you know, 8.38 to 10, whatever, you know, however long of a walk you went, you just put the time you started and the time you ended. So you go to the date there. Okay. And then what you do here is you scroll to the hours first, and then you scroll to the minutes and you have the AM or PM. And then you say, okay, now I'm not going to save that because I didn't actually do this. So I'm going to delete it out, but you would just go hit the green check mark. Yes. Cancel new activity. So again, the blue dots are for exercise. So that shows my morning swim. And then it shows my breakfast after that, where I had the three eggs, sausage and raspberries. Now numbers wise, there's also this mention of calibration in there. And it said that some devices need to be calibrated. Some don't. But the way to calibrate it is you have to go get an actual glucose test by someone else at a lab at the same time that you're stable in this thing. And then you coordinate them. I'm not going to go through with that. I'll just watch for spikes. And what I'm really trying to do is see, do I have a glucose spike when I eat? And as long as I'm staying in keto, I don't think I'll see much for spikes up over a hundred but I'm just trying to watch and see what activities generate different results in my blood sugar. I also went swimming this morning with it because according to the instructions, it said you can go for 30 minutes or less at three feet or less depth. And so I did my 20 minutes of swim and then I did five minutes in the hot tub. So I stayed below my 30 minutes and I was below the three foot requirement. What I also found out is I was trying to get a dietitian that I saw was included to help explain what all these numbers mean and how much should the spike be and what do these things mean. And I was told that I declined the complimentary dietitian when I set up the order. So just be advised with that. It is part of the included 350 for the month. So you might as well have somebody to tell you what all this means, unless you're already an ordained dietitian and you know all this stuff. My next concern is that the bandage that you put over the sensor on about day three or four, it started coming up all around the edges. Now, yes, I'm swimming and I'm showering every day, but I'm doing everything within the directions. I don't go deeper than three feet and I don't swim for more than, 30 minutes at a time, just like it says. And it started lifting everywhere and I was concerned it was going to come up or water would get in and damage the sensor. Remember, this is supposed to last for 14 days. But as you can see, I had to basically hold it down with athletic tape. And when I contacted them and said, Hey, what's the deal? Those are supposed to last 14 days. Mine started lifting on about day three or four. What they told me is that I could go order more bandages. So I had to go order for $17, a 25 piece 
bandage kit to go over this. That's why they don't want you to pull the liner on the middle of the bandage because they don't want it to stick to it because they know this thing wasn't gonna last 14 days and you'd have to lift it up and you don't wanna pull the sensor off. So what I need to do now, and I'll use the other NutriSense one I have, is I'll try to pull this one off without breaking the sensor loose, ideally. I'm not real thrilled to be honest that I paid 350 for a month. They knew these bandages wouldn't last 14 days and they're telling me I gotta go buy my own replacements. So now I'm gonna try to take the old one off and put the next one on before I go to those poverty bandages without the fancy logo. Again, the main thing I don't wanna do is break that sensor loose in the middle. I'm trying to hold the sensor still, and you can see that release liner in the middle it still feels secure. You wanna leave that middle release liner in place, and of course, that now I know is because they know this thing isn't gonna stick for a full 14 days. And of course there's a big wrinkle right there, which sucks because that's just going to be another spot where that thing's going to come loose now. This is super awkward even looking here in the camera trying to figure it out. The good thing about them only lasting three, four days is I'll get plenty of practice on applying these things before the month's over. All right, let's make sure the sensor still works. So I'm going to go scan and it did like it. Good. So I can hide it. And there's my latest scan. All right, a couple tips and tricks. When you open the app, it's gonna be sort of grayed out. The first thing you'll see is to choose your account, which should be a Google account. And even though I'm not going to put all this in Google Fit or anything, and I'm gonna back out of that, until you do those steps, you cannot read or enter a meal or enter a workout. It's, this is on a Droid platform. I don't know if Apple's the same way but you have to do those things before you can go through and scan or anything. Then you can go add and you can scan, meal, activity, whatever. The other thing it seems like is if your NFC isn't active and you get to this point, you can go into settings and activate the NFC and it will not let you. You have to back out of the app, close it and come back in again. So those are a couple things if you're having a problem taking a reading, those are two issues to look at. And it doesn't really tell you this, you just have to figure it out as you go. As much as I had a little bit of heartburn with what I felt was too few bandages, only two for the month, and the some of the little usability quirks in here with activation and stuff, the actual reading the data has seemed to be very good. As long as you're taking the time to put in your meals, and put in your exercises. It goes through, it gives you the data, it tells you everything's going well, ideally. Uh, you get the red and blue dots for the exercise and for the meals. You get what you see is in the green is sort of the okay blood sugar levels. It does show a lot in this lime green bottom here for me, what might be considered low blood sugar, like this whole section on the 22nd. They probably want you to stay more in the green than this yellow green. Say for this one, I had steak and I actually had, this was a cheat meal, which means I had sweet potato casserole with the steak, and you can see it sort of resulted in spikes in my blood sugar. This particular one on the 20th is a huge spike up to like almost 190. And that was a little bit concerning because it seemed too high and again, you can see if you get too high, it turns that same lime green like if you're too low. So that green level between you know, 70 and about 140 is kind of where they want you to stay. Now that spike was extra high because not only did I eat something more sugary, I had a couple fruit smoothies in Austin, then I drove two hours back on the motorcycle in the heat where I wasn't drinking water on the ride, I just rode straight through and it was in traffic and everything else, so the dehydration combined with the higher than normal level of carbs is what probably resulted in that excessive spike. For the most part, they've been pretty tame. I did notice that even this morning, the acai bowl that I had at breakfast resulted in a pretty high spike as well, up to almost 175. So that's higher than what I want. They do provide you a dietitian. Uh, you just wanna make sure that when you order it, you click the dietitian support 
and they've been really good. I've uh, been very happy with the dietitian Sandra that's been assigned to me and she's been able to walk me through. I have a lot of questions obviously in terms of, hey, I'm trying to set up this keto diet with a cheat meal every three days. How do I know if I'm getting the right spike? And really what it boils down to is you want that blood sugar to be in the green, probably in the lower end for me being on keto, but when I do have a cheat meal, I wanna spike it about to 140, but preferably not much more than that. So this tool is now becoming useful for me because what I can do is experiment with my cheat meals and see, okay, when I have a cheat meal, do I get a spike up to around 140 or is it too high like this where I know, okay, I shouldn't do that anymore, that was too much. So the actual information you get from this, for me anyway, is shown to be very useful. I just did the one month service of this, which was $350, I believe. If you decide you only wanna do it for the month, they'll send you one of the emails when you order saying, if you wanna cancel, here's the steps to do that. If you do nothing, it will automatically renew and bill you another 350 bucks next month. So make sure that you pay attention if you only intend to do it for a month, just to kind of baseline like I'm doing. And that's how to use your NutriSense glucose monitoring system. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.